There were two events that defined the 1970s for India. The first was India's historic victory in the 1971 war, which saw the birth of Bangladesh, and the second was the declaration of emergency in 1975. Together they also represented the best of Indira Gandhi, the decisive and brave leader, and the worst, the power-hungry politician ready to go to any lengths to have her way. No agenda and uh, the next meeting was not discussed at all except for the fact that there would be such a meeting. For good or evil, for highs and lows, the decade of the 1970s truly belonged to Indira. The decade began with a bang when Indira called for a midterm poll in March 1971 following a split in the Congress a year earlier. She won the elections with a massive majority, riding the wave of her Garibi Hatao slogan. The landmark election established Indira as a leader with charisma. She found a place in people's heart, especially the poor, as Indira Amma. After the Bangladesh war, she was hailed as Durga or slayer of evil, even by her bitter critics who had tasted defeat at her hands less than a year earlier. But within just four years, when she imposed the emergency, she was denounced as a self-serving dictator. The dizzying 1971 victory seems to have had a deep impact on the psyche of Indira, the people around her and even the polity. In 1974, Congress President Devkant Barua famously claimed, India is Indira, Indira is India, with great adulation. Her dramatic rise and vote-catching prowess spawned a personality cult around Indira. Even as Indira acquired unburdled power and vast in hero worship, the economic situation worsened. The burden of feeding 10 million refugees from what was then East Pakistan, the cost of the war and two droughts in 1973-74 which led to food shortages price rises, unemployment and rampant corruption hurt. The oil shock of 1973 following the Arab-Israel war when prices rose and inflation spiraled worsened the crisis. The economic problems fueled students' movements in Gujarat and Bihar. Indira felt helpless when Jayaprakash Narayan popularly referred to as JP, came out of retirement to lead the movement against her and demand her resignation. Her popularity began to plummet and public resentment grew. Meanwhile, on the 18th of May 1974, India conducted its first nuclear test, only the sixth country in the world to do so. But the prestige of becoming a nuclear power didn't help Indira politically. In fact, within a year, things were to change dramatically. On the 12th of June 1975, the Allahabad High Court unseated Indira from the Raibareli Lok Sabha constituency on charges of electoral malpractices. She responded by imposing an internal emergency on the night of the 25th and 26th of June. She then arrested JP and opposition leaders in a nationwide soup. And this was just the beginning. A series of authoritarian measures followed and a caucus formed around her younger son Sanjay Gandhi who controlled the levers of power. In a surprise move, Indira called for Lok Sabha elections in March 1977 after lifting the emergency, but the Congress suffered its worst electoral defeat. Indira herself lost her Raibareli seat, 
while Sanjay lost from Amiti. Indira's old rival Murarji Desai was elected Prime Minister to lead a Janata Party government. Indira Gandhi remained in the political wilderness for the first few months after losing the election as the Murarji Desai government ran a witch hunt against her. But gradually she gathered her political wits and fought back, cashing in on the weakness of the coalition under Desai. She waited for an opportune moment to strike back. The moment arrived in August 1977. In Bilchi, a village in central Bihar, 11 Dalits were massacred by a group of land owners. Indira visited Belchi, which was inaccessible during the monsoons, dramatically on an elephant's back. This made international headlines. The Belchi visit and the overwhelming response she received from people showed that Indira's appeal among the Dalits and the poor had not waned. In October 1977, the Janata Party government committed a blunder that helped Indira earn even wider sympathy. She was arrested on flimsy charges, charges that concerned the supply of jeeps during campaigning. The charges couldn't stand up in court and Indira was released the next day. Indira alleged that the government's action against her was motivated by political vendetta. She was arrested again a year later in 1978, but by this time Indira was being seen as a hero. Internal bickering and lack of performance resulted in the Morarji government losing the trust of the people. With the wind turning in her favour, Indira was elected to the Lok Sabha from Chikmagalur in Karnataka in a by-election in November 1978. The Janta Party government fell in July 1979, precipitating a mid-term poll in January 1980. This paved the way for the return of Indira Gandhi to power. If the 1960s had seen Indira Gandhi transform from a political underdog into a leader who made her mark, the 1970s saw her become larger than life. Through Indira's rise and fall and rise again, she became the lord of all she surveyed. <laughs>